Namaste. Welcome to Information Security 4. This is the fourth in the series of the three courses that we had uh, offered earlier. The first one basically introduced you to all the notations, terminologies of the entire game of information security starting from hardware, architecture, software, compilers and then uh, network etc. The second course actually dealt with some of the hardware features that are available for you to build a secure system. The third course introduced you to different facets of operating systems and networking which are the foundation building blocks for understanding uh, security at these levels. Now in the fourth course we are now going to deal with something uh, which is very important and interesting which is 4 and 6 of information security attacks. What we will be covering is that we will be giving you some case studies of some of the uh, information security attacks that had happened and but importantly we will cover some of the details that will make you quite proficient with understanding the system and the networking in detail that will enable you to do 4 and 6 in a logical directed way. Any information security system today um, needs to be protected and in case of an attack should provide enough information for us to go and trace out what has happened. So, <clears throat> in that direction it needs to be monitored also. So, there are two facets in building any information security infrastructure. The first part is to see that necessary security is ensured. The second part is that in case of there is an attack, how do we go, what are the traces, what are the uh, facilities that are available for us to do an analysis or investigation which we call as forensics to come out and find out what exactly happened during that attack. Both are extremely important and the first three courses basically taught you more about building secure systems. The fourth course actually talks about how to fine tune or how to model your infrastructure in such a way that you can do sensible forensic in the case of an attack. In this couple of sessions that I will be handling, I am basically going to talk about how attacks basically originate. What are the types of attacks? I will give you some a list of examples. The weakest link, how does an attack happen? The attack actually happens because there is an issue at one of these three levels. I think these three levels we have been con uh, continuously mentioning in the last three information security courses under the same uh, NPTEL platform. The three important things that govern a security of a system is people followed by process followed by technology. If the end user namely the people they are weak then certainly the technology whatever good technology you have you may have the best password encryption algorithm, you may have the best supervisor permission in the operating system that nobody could go and tamper these confidential thing. But if somebody is going to uh, basically put their password in Facebook or stick it on a uh, notice board, then whatever be uh, the encryption algorithm, whatever be the other thing, uh, you cannot do anything about it, right. So, the entire system becomes extremely weak if the end users are not sensitized to uh, the basic principles of security. So, that is why the government of India has a program called Information Security Education Awareness Program, the ISCA. The prime objective of this program sponsored by the Ministry of Information Technology under whose auspices these course materials have been developed is to go and spread this awareness about uh, information security. So, the main concentration there is that people of different walks of life need to basically understand what is uh, security. The second aspect is about the process, how do you ensure security? So, if there is something wrong in the process where then the information can leak and the third is of course technology and it is also, also in the same order people, process and technology. So, so we have to strengthen all these aspects. So, when we look at 4 and 6, we should have a holistic way of looking at people, then I have to look at process, then I have to look start looking at technology and all these three things are very important and now what we will do uh, in the first three sessions is I am going to talk about some of the prominent attacks or information security leaks that had ha happened uh, and um, and how, what would be the reaction to that. Uh, so, 
where do we blame? Is it the people that we are going to blame or the process or the technology? We will have a clear analysis and that is what we are going to do in the first uh, uh, four to five sessions. This first couple of sessions I want to start with a story. In this story, there is a heroine, vice gen and what I am, I am just uh, you know going to tell this story where I am going to trace the career path of vice gen uh, right and then in the IT uh, uh, revolution that is happening and then uh, all the uh, attacks that had happened I am going to fit into her career and tell how these attacks have happened and this is the story that I am going to uh, tell in the next uh, 3 to 4 sessions. Now, Welcome to this session, this is Vice Gen and the IT Revolution and I am Professor Kamakoti of IIT Madras and this is the first screen. Okay. Now, the story starts with a company named TTT who wants to buy a photocopy machine, right. So, they release a tender inviting uh, you know quotations and the statement in the tender was that we need uh, photocopy machines with speed at least uh, 60 copies per minute, it should have duplex, it should have at least 3 year warranty and then discounted cartridge cost then all the other interfaces like I should be able to connect to the printer or the photocopy machine by Ethernet, Wi-Fi, USB interface etc. These were the quotations received. So, 4 companies quoted against the tender and everybody said that they can give 60 pages per minute. They can say they said they have duplex, they will give you 3 year warranty, no problem. And then there were the castings 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then they were asking like discount at cartridge cost, right. So, that was a very intelligent thing that was put in the tender. Uh, it was basically learned from the process that the cartridge cost much more than the printer, right or the cartridge cost much more than the photocopy machine, right. In overall, the amount of money you spend on a, a recurring basis to buy cartridges would very soon exceed the cost of the printer or the photocopy machine. So, that is why they asked for discounted cartridges which is a very, a very important uh, part of the tender. And there you see that there are the first fellow ABC said I will give you 2 extra cartridges, the second fellow said I will give you 10 extra cartridges free, while the third fellow said I will give you 12. The fourth fellow said that he will not give anything free extra, but he will replace every 15 days he will replace a cartridge for the next 3 years free of cost. So, this was this was the tender and obviously, the uh, purchase committee met, the process is followed here please understand and the technical M committee uh, opined seeing all these tender, yeah machine is one thing, but cartridge is going to be the recurring expenditure. So, machine is like an elephant that you pay only one purchase, but cartridge is the food you give to the elephant. So, you meet repeated purchase of that food and that is going to become much costly. When the finance committee said that recurring expenditure is more high than the capital expenditure and cartridge is a recurring expenditure. So, let us go on. So, so based on all these things, it was an obvious choice by these committees to go in for JKL who had quoted the least 1,30,000 from this photocopy machine and he also said that he will replace the cartridge every 15 days for the next 3 years. So, the JKL was extremely happy. So, he really wanted this order. So, he got this. And then what happened? So, the new photocopy machine was delivered. It is quite obvious that the old machine which was in the CTO's office for which this replacement was to be made was moved to the canteen. It just started xeroxing all the Tiffin bills. Well, this new machine was got installed in CTO's office which is also correct by the process. right? And JKL did excellent because his first order he had to really catch the market. So, maybe he is a young company as you see. So, he did excellent service every 15 days promptly he came he replaced the cartridge took the old cartridge put the new cartridge and things went off very fine. It went to an extent that there was a process again set up that every 15 days this photocopy machine will be stopped JKL will come he will remove that old cartridge put the new cartridge and then go. So, there was a definite shutdown period for this photocopy machine for usage every 15 days. So, JKL was doing it was doing excellent customer service. Then he took this cartridge, he re-inked it. So, he was doing green service. Then this re-inked cartridge he was giving to some government schools. So, it was, he was doing social service. So, JKL was awarded the best uh, vendor award because he was doing good customer service. He was quite aware of green initiatives and he was also doing lot of corporate social responsibility. So, he was given a very good award for all this stuff 
So things were fine going on, but suddenly what happened? TTT, the company which purchased this photocopy machine, started losing tenders. Almost all of them they lost in the next quarter. Everything they quote, somebody quotes lesser than them and they take the order. So when they did not get any order in the next six months, immediately the share prices started falling drastically. So at this point, there was no income and there was a lot of expenditure. So the only sustainable thing, interestingly, was this uh, photocopy machine because they were, you know, uh, this was under annual maintenance and every 15 days that company JKL was coming and replacing the cartridge. So it was not incurring any expenditure and it was well maintained and it was quiet. So since the share prices fell, the company was in real doldrums. Then uh, the, actually the management uh, met, they broke their head, they found out what happened here, can't we even quote one tender properly. They did not any got, so they went through all the process, how people arrive at tender values, everything. They had been doing this for years together and they had been extremely successful suddenly. No clue why they are losing it. Then a lot of magazines like Economic Untimely uh, rated TTT as does not know how to do business. And then finally, the management that it decided to close TTT operations. So this is the status. So the main issue is that now when we have electronic hardware, we can't throw out that hardware. Purchasing the hardware, if you say, has a difficulty level of X. Condemning that hardware has difficulty level of 10x. Because electronic components will have a lot of caustic materials, chemicals. So there will be a lot of environmental issue when you want to dump electronic components. So, and there will be a lot of money involved in recycling, making it safe and then, this, uh, you know, giving it out. So, <coughs> the company obviously said, okay, if there are working electronic components, they said all the employees, anyway, we are closing. Please take whatever you want, you please take it home. Please decide what you want and take it home, okay. Because this will reduce the disposal cost, which would be much more than the procurement cost many times. So, now comes my heroine, Vice Jean, she is Vice. So she thought, like we are losing the job, let me take this photocopy machine, it's a brand new one. I will put a photocopy shop, rent a small place, put a photocopy shop, start earning some money from this and then try and uh, talk to that company JKL if they can support this machine for some time and uh, let us run this show. So she started, you know, it was a very huge machine, so she wanted to dismantle it for taking it home in her auto or something. So now she called JKL. And JKL promptly replied, JKL know that this company is closing. So they promptly replied, call is registered, possible date of visit within next 32 days. So obviously, 32 days this company will not survive. So Vice Dean said, let, let me just open it up, let me try and dismantle it. When Vice Dean tried and dismantled it at the office, right, so he, she has to dismantle, so first he removed the cartridge. The cartridge fell down and it broke. And that is where I am going to stop this session one. With this story, before you start looking at my next session, session two, try and find out what would have happened. This cartridge breaking, I am just stopping it like a nice, uh, you know, TV serial, okay. So, this cartridge breaking and purchase of a Xerox machine, plus JKL coming and replacing it every 15 days and then the company TTT closing its operation. All these four, does it have something in common? Can you relate it? Just think before you go and see my session 2 that is going to follow. I hope this is interesting. I want all of you to start interacting with us. This is a very interesting topic, cyber forensic. I want all of you to start interacting with us uh, through the uh, portal, there is a portal made available by the uh, MOOC platform of IIT Madras where you can post your queries, you can also say the lecture was interesting, lecture was boring, you can also give all feedbacks, right, we are interested in taking those feedbacks because as you know in, in time to come we want to start refining these courses and make them more robust and more informative. So I look for very active participation from your end. Uh, in uh, especially the cyber forensic course. We will meet you in session 2.